Turkey's back. This thing looks so sick. Like every time I walk into the shop, I literally just stand here and just look at it because it's just it looks so good that I like I, I just want to get this thing done as quick as I possibly can. And actually, uh, in the last video, I was finishing putting the head studs in well since the car's back now i can go ahead and put the other two head studs in but the custom manifold is here as well so i got everything mocked up and this is what it looks like look how insane this setup looks like it is crazy on how far this car has become since i bought it in october um so i was at my buddy's shop called race lab industries located in ohio he this is his first manifold he ever made and it just looks insane this i i literally cannot wait to get this in the car so today i will actually be uh finishing putting the head studs in as well as um doing the timing and then once that's done i'm gonna go ahead and pull the mock-up motor out of this car because as you guys can see this clip is already undone I just have a just a regular bare block and my trans in here um, I did have a cylinder head in here for uh, my buddy to use for mock-up but we made a little deal um, that he gets to keep the head and he makes me um, mounting brackets and stuff for the radiator as well as the front mount so just a little update on this car. I did pick up this carbon fiber hood. It is painted silver. I do want to get it wrapped. I picked this up for a crazy deal. Um, it does need some work. The paint is cracking as well as the clear coat is coming off of the carbon fiber as you can see there. Um, these vents like this one looks fine, um, but on this one, it, it's completely junk. Uh, it's completely cracking there as well as there, but I'm not really too worried about it. Um, I actually picked this hood up for $50, $50. I drove six hours in total to go pick this hood up. It was three and a half hours one way. And I seen it one night at like 12 o'clock and um, no one really wanted to go with me. But my buddy Coda that is now into the shop, he actually owns this fully built Evo. He ended up wanting to go with me early in the morning. Um, I didn't get home till like one o'clock. We I picked him up around six in the morning ish, and we drove three and a half hours away to Michigan, and came, went and picked up the hood and came back. And I'm so glad I did that because this hood just makes the car. And if you guys are ever looking for a carbon fiber hood, this is the way to go. Like, try to find deals, marketplace, you know, whatever. But if you can try to find this style definitely go for it because sometimes it doesn't look good online but as soon as you see it on your car 10 times better but um also i picked up these bbs wheels uh, a couple weeks ago and i actually picked these up from a uh, volkswagen these are real two-piece bbs wheels um, when i got them the paint was all cracking so i ended up sandblasting these repainting the hardware and then just redoing the whole entire wheel in the face um, I also have brand new pads and rotors all the way around and then these tires are 245 50 16s and these are just federal RSRs. I know these really aren't going to grip very well but it's just something to get this car rolling around on the street and they just look really good. Um, also I just have basic tires for the rear and I'm also going to get those mounted up just to see what they look like. Um, when I put the rims on a while ago they kind of sat inward so basically the you know, typical hovercraft look for SRTs in the rear. So on the front, I actually have a one inch spacer that I have to get for the rear. So that way they sit flush. Um, 
other than that really not much has changed except i got my fuel pumps on i got the fuel cell all hooked up i just need a couple more fittings in the fuel system but uh we fully got all the heart I, well, I, I don't know if i showed you guys but i got a full harness now it's a race clip five point harness it has the uh, quick disconnect on it as well um, we got all five points fully mounted um, the switch panel is coming along very nicely i have the fans wired up i have the fuel pumps wired up as well i think i think that's it actually um and then i just have to wire up some lights and some other miscellaneous stuff but other than that not much has changed as i said the car's been gone for around two months to get custom parts made um it will be going back hopefully during the winter to get a full 85 certified cage um because i want to make this thing as safe as possible i do definitely do not want to cheap out on safety that's like my number one thing at the moment um like I do want to get it running, but I also want to have it as safe, like as safe as possible because I know I will be giving people rides in it, which I don't mind. So if I can make it safe for me and other people, you know that I'm I'm I'm, I'm okay with that. Um, so that's basically about it. I also got this carbon fiber trunk, which I don't know if I showed you guys that either. I I don't remember what I showed you guys to be honest, but I got the rear cutouts in the bumper brand new tail lights, carbon fiber trunk. I also got this for a steal, um, but that's basically about it. So I'm gonna go ahead and, I don't know. I'm gonna go ahead, get the head studs and then put them in the motor and then time it. And then after I get done timing that, then I'll go ahead and start yanking the Maka motor out of this car and maybe place that one in i'm not 100 percent sure because i don't have a clutch so if anything it'll just sit in there and i i kind of don't want it just to sit in there so i may just leave it out but i do want to pull this maca motor out just so that way when i do get my clutch in i can go ahead and throw it all in at once and you know go from there but i think i'm probably going to throw it on jack stands take the rear wheels off and then figure out what other fittings i need for the fuel system and then um we'll just go from there so i'm gonna go ahead and start timing the motor all right, so I went ahead and got these two middle studs put in as well as the uh, nuts. So now I'm gonna go ahead and torque these ARP head studs down. If you don't know and you're looking to torque these down, there's a three-step phase. You do 28 foot-pounds, 56, and then 85. And then um, you can just look up just a regular torque pattern on the proper way to torque down all these head stud bolts. All right, so now that I got my torque stick, set to 28 foot pounds i'm going to go ahead and torque every one until it clicks so as soon as it clicks you want to let let off go to the next one clicks and so forth so on and so forth and if you don't know or you don't want to look it up for the torque pattern it goes you start from the bottom middle on the intake side you go one two three four five six seven eight nine ten you go directly in that order and so for arps just like i said you go in that direct order you do one full sweep at 28 foot pounds the next sweep is 56 foot pounds and then the third final sweep is 85 foot pounds. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish torquing these all down. As you guys can see before i got the whole entire head torqued down in the proper sequence where it's supposed to be now the head is fully torqued down and ready to go now i'm going to go grab some assembly lube douse this whole thing in assembly lube as well as the cams throw the cams back in and then put the cam caps on and then get those torqued down the spec as well 
All right, this is going to be the assembly lube that I am using, Lucas Oil Products. This stuff works great, so I'm gonna go ahead and lube everything up. I usually just go through and roll the rollers around. These. Make sure you grab your uh, cam seal gasket and uh, yeah, just go ahead and plop these in there. I kind of just like to spin these around just a little bit just to get some type of lubrication on them. But um, my thing fell off. Now that I got that sitting flush in there, I'm gonna go ahead, take some more assembly lube and get the top of the cams as well as the lobes. All right, time to grab the other cam. So I said, don't forget the cam seal. as well Get some more assembly loop go it on top now you want to take your cam caps and place them in the order that you have sitting all right so i went ahead and got all the bolts um just started in by hand just like i said i am missing two of these 10 mils here as well as three on this side i do have one so i'm going to run to the parts store and go grab four brand new ones just so that way i have four new ones holding this side down as well as this side and then i'm gonna go ahead and come back and get these fully torqued down all right so as you guys can see i got the back end of blue srt jacked up um just like i said in the last video i have tires mounted on the other bbs wheels which are sitting right here um these aren't the tires are going to be running but just so i can you know drive it around the street when it's done and I'll figure out what type, what size tire I want in the in the back end. But now I'm going to go ahead, grab these wheels, and then put them on the car. So I actually got some uh, ton mil spacers that I'm going to throw on, just to see um, where they sit for now. And if I need to get bigger spacers, then I will. I just want the wheel and the tire to sit flush with the fender because I hate the way the ASM looks on SRTs. So far with it in the air, it doesn't look that bad. But I'm gonna go ahead and get the other side on. Um, and then also when I lower it on the ground, um, I wanna see how it sits because I do have to raise the front end a little bit. And I also want the ass end to be a little higher than the front end because I kinda want the car to sit at an angle just so that way all, all the weight is basically transfer to the front at all times because front wheel drive you want the all most of the way in the front so Thank you. 
that's all the way on the ground. It actually doesn't look that bad. The front end most definitely needs to be uh, raised a little. So, but other than that, I think it looks pretty good. Definitely need a smaller tire in the rear. I don't know, to me it just kind of looks a little goofy. But I mean, the fitment, honestly, doesn't look that bad. Compared to the this one, I have Indy 500s in the front with like a little tiny, you know, two and a half mil spacer or whatever. So I kind of have to use that. Otherwise those tires have the coilovers. But I hate the hovercraft look. I cannot stand that. I cannot stand that at all. So this thing will actually be getting some wheels soon, but that'll be on a whole nother video. But this doesn't look that bad. I actually don't mind it. I think I might just keep it for now, just so that way I can keep it off the spares. And if I ever need to use the spares to, you know, maybe go pick up another roller, maybe, who knows? But hell yeah, it's looking mighty fine good. But all right, well, now that I got those on, now I'm gonna run to the parts store and get the bolts that I need for uh, these caps. Just got back from the parts store, picked up these uh, bolts for the cam caps, uh, as well as picked up this uh, valve cover gasket since they had it in stock. So I'm gonna go ahead, throw these bolts in, and then get the eight millimeter bolts torqued down to, um, it's like eight pounds or a little over eight pounds. And then these other bigger bolts are torqued down to 20 foot pounds. So I'm gonna go ahead and get those in. So I went ahead and got all the cam caps bolted down. Um, I didn't really feel like filming any of that. It's just pretty straightforward. Um, and then I went ahead and got the new valve cover gasket on the valve cover as well. And if you see here, I put a little bit of RTV in these crevices, just so that way there's a little extra, um, uh, you know, sealing on the corners because it does tend to leak in there. So now I'm just gonna go ahead, throw the valve cover on. And I do have all the valve cover bolts, but I'm unsure on if I can use them with this or if I just have to get all new hardware as well as you use O-rings. Cause I feel like if I use these, it's just going to cause a leak that's just gonna bug me. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and put the valve cover on and just get it sitting on there flush. And then um, I'll see if I can use these. Found the new hardware and the old hardware. Um, so if you look at this, there's this rubber seal that sits over this like flange washer. The thing is though, is this doesn't come off of the threads. So if I won't, even if I wanted to take it off, I couldn't unless I cut these, but I don't want to ruin them just in case if I have to use them, but the rubber seals do come off. So I may just run it like this just to see if it works. And if it doesn't, then I can just go ahead and throw the old ones back in. They're not hard to change. I would like to use the new ones. So I'm going to try to use them. And if I can't, then I'll just revert back to trying to make these work. So I'm going to go ahead and get all those set up and then get them thrown on the valve cover and then get that bolted down. All right. So now that I'm running into issues to where I can't get these O-rings off or the seals off, I remembered that I have this assortment of rubber O-rings here. So I'm going to go ahead and try to find the right one that fits snug around here and hopefully throw those on. And if they seal, that would be nice. If not, now I'm just going to have to use the old ones or figure out if I can just order these separate. So just going to have to do that. All right, so, so far, it looks like it's hopefully gonna work, um, but it looks really good. Valve cover's a little dirty, but it looks really good with the hardware. Everything's just tying in nicely. Um, these caps aren't gonna be here. 
I just put these on here just so really nothing goes into the valve cover. Um, but yeah, those will be going off. These are dash 10 fittings that I got welded on. It's from the same guy that made this manifold. These also came out very nice. So I just kind of keep these covered. But um, yeah, now it's time to turn this motor around and do the timing. So I am going to be using stock cam gears. Um, I was gonna get adjustable ones, but the tuner that always tunes my cars um, told me that I would be perfectly fine just using the stock ones and there's no need for adjustable ones. I know that's probably gonna stir up some, uh, you know, talk that, oh, you should use adjustable ones or you shouldn't or all this other stuff. It really doesn't matter. I'm just going by what, what my tuner recommends to make his life easier and for me to make the most power. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw the OEM ones on. If you don't know, there's two sides of these. One side says 2.4 liter, the other side says 2.0. You always wanna have the 2.4 when doing these motors. Now I got this new tensioner tightened down as well as everything else. I pulled the ATI dampener off just so that way I can get to the cam gear. Um, this bolt will not be there, but I recommend putting it there just to tighten down this tensioner because when you put the motor mount on that bolts to the fourth mount, um, it bolts down to this. So when I'm done taking up, when I'm done doing the timing, I'll go ahead and remove this bolt and then everything should be good. So there's like no room where I'm filming. Basically you just want to turn these cams as straight as you can get them for the most part. So just get them kind of straight. You want these to be equal as possible and you also want this bottom cam gear to be top dead center so this arrow needs to be matched up with the arrow on the water pump all right so as you can see here i got this arrow perfect with the arrow on the water pump as you see this arrow right here you'll know because there is a uh, there's a keyway that goes in there and um so there's an arrow on this crank pulley you just match it up with that arrow and then you just want to go ahead and throw the belt on and then when you put the belt on, you just want to set the tensioner. And when you set the tensioner, the cam gear should equal out and be perfectly straight. You should be able to basically put like a piece of paper across this and both of these tabs or these notches, that one there and there and so on, so on and so forth, those should be perfectly aligned. So I just right now got the belt sitting on there. For me, what I think is easiest is for me to get these cam gears as straight as possible by hand as well as getting the crank pulley and those arrows also aligned perfectly. And then put it on the tensioner and then put it on this, um, just this pulley and basically walking it and sliding onto the water pump. Usually I'll walk it on this, but it's kind of like, it's, it's really hard basically to try to get it both ways. So um, this is lined up, this isn't, so now I'm going to try to line them up with the tensioner. When you're tensioning the motor, you always want that that little stick to be in between that galley right there so where it's at now i'm gonna go ahead oh look at that it's gonna be hard but you want to make sure when you tighten it it's in between that so i'm gonna go ahead and do that all right so it is the next day um when i got done timing the motor me and a buddy of mine ended up going to a local car meet and uh, we just basically went there had some fun uh really didn't get any runs in but basically just went there to hang out and um, this is basically the outro. So as always, like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.